Hey family, I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm Habasa, helping your brothers and sisters in Africa. But I'm still in my hometown right now, Galveston, Texas, USA. <laughs> I sure hope that you're not just clicking on the thumbnail and then saying, no, you know, let me just not even open this video and just ask her a question. <laughs> Hopefully your friends will tell you that. I would know if you really watched the video or not. So if you ask me where I am, when I even sell the thumbnail where I am, you had not watch the video. I had somebody yesterday ask me, did I go back to the Gambia yet? I'm like, if the video says I'm taking a walk on the beach in Galveston, Texas, what do you think? You know? <laughs> I don't understand people. But anyway, guys, how y'all doing today? Hope y'all are okay. I had an errand to do on this side of the town, of town. So, as promised, when I'm in the area, I stopped by the beach. I'm going to turn this camera around so you can see what I'm saying. There you go, guys. I like to share this natural beauty with y'all. These flowers really like the sand. They do. And I like looking at them. Yellow is one of my favorite colors. So I decided, hey, why not stop and let y'all see what I'm saying? And I will turn the camera around now and a little bit just because I want to tell y'all the story. And some people can focus on the story better <laughs> when they're actually watching the storyteller. So I, I think I'll do that today. But anyway, guys, how pretty is this? Every day is different. <clears throat> it's cloudy, but it's still recording just fine for as I'm concerned. It is a weekday. It's a Monday, so you're not going to see as many people on the beach. And I am so happy as the Pleasure Pier again, unique to Galveston, Texas. It was around even when my mother was young. Now she is with the ancestors. But you can enjoy all kinds of nature around here. So I do. Because I'm focusing in on you guys. Otherwise, I pretty much would have taken this place for granted. Like I have most of my life. I'm wearing earplugs today, so I hope you guys can hear me just fine without so much noise like the other day. And I'm trying to make it better for you guys. Let y'all see a little of this water before I turn the camera around and, and talk a minute. And y'all see it has undercurrent, so that's why they had a picture there. So you shouldn't be swimming <clears throat> when you see those signs. They have deep undercurrents there. Lots of people have drowned swimming in between those uh, flags. So that's what the flags are about. That is known undercurrents by in between those flags. So you should not swim there. And it's probably because it's so close to the rocks that the rocks make an undercurrent. So they actually measure how far away you should be before you get in the water, even just for a little walk in the water. So. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully you're enjoying some of this nature with me.
wanted y'all to see just a little bit more of this in case you love it like I do. I had more than one subject matter that I would have liked to discuss, but I think I'll just pick one when I turn that camera around to discuss with y'all. And I can always talk about the other one another day because it is not going anywhere. Not at all. All right, y'all, here's this beautiful water. <laughs> Okay, let me turn this around, y'all. Just trying to get y'all just a couple of more seconds of this. not to get wet I mean my shoes can get wet because they're just tennis but you know how that is you just if you didn't plan on getting wet that day you do what you can not to get wet all right I hope y'all enjoy that. okay guys I hope you guys enjoy that walk on the beach and now you understand some of the stuff I'm talking about also past that walk on the beach and just enjoy the view while I'm talking. I just want to know, do y'all really hate Babylon? Hmm. I've been seeing a lot of people talking plenty stuff about Babylon but still asking you to use Babylon's system of money using, you know, Patreon, PayPal, Cash App. <laughs> if the Babylon system is falling, guys, it wouldn't do you a bit of good to do any of that. But anyway, I'm not one of those people that's praying for anything to collapse. My family is here, guys. Some of my family is here, and the majority of my family that I grew up with is right here in the USA. So no, I am not praying for nothing to fall. Not at all. Just because I'm blessed to be able to leave and be at home in the motherland don't mean that I'm praying for disasters to happen here. And what's even sadder is when I watch folks online who talk about Pan-Africanism and then in the next breath being so capitalistic. Are you planning on rebuilding Babylon when you get to the motherland? You don't have to answer me. It's just a question to make you think. Are you going to rebuild Babylon when you get to the motherland? Do you think everything you have in Babylon has to be reproduced in the motherland? Because I've gone to some open houses and the houses look just like the houses in any suburb in the USA. Big boxes, all the same kind of ceilings with the light having psychedelic kind of colors. The only thing strange is in the kitchen they have the little uh, cooktops instead of actual stoves. I think that's strange for big gigantic house and just to have a little two burner cooktop. 
but that's neither here nor there. The houses are huge, with at least two stories. They're made mostly of concrete. They're very hot. They have to be air conditioned mostly, or you'll be needing to be outside all the time. I have no idea how much that light bill would cost it to uh, cool off such a thing. Are you thinking about sustainability in the long term? Not just saying, oh, I want to have land that's not lease land for 99 years or whatever. Knowing quite well, nobody I know is going to be here in 99 years anyway. And is my family going to even be in Africa in 99 years or 50 years? I have no idea, guys. My plans for my land pretty much is that if I'm not around, that land goes back to the Gambian people. Pretty much it'll be somebody that I assign that has become like family to me. Are you thinking that you're just a gentrifier when you go to the motherland? Are you gonna try to learn some of the culture there and actually see our brothers and sisters there as brothers and sisters and not merely your, your help, your house help, or, or, or your workers. Because I sure hope when we won't recreate Liberia, you know, or, or Sierra Leone. We're all the same, guys. We all came from one mother. The only difference is the concept. Somebody who voluntarily left their home is an immigrant, but somebody who was kidnapped and taken away as a child that, is, that was stolen. So the concept is different. So if somebody kidnaps me from my mother, she'll be so heartbroken and looking for me. And the same difference, I'll be so heartbroken and looking for my mother. Nothing would satisfy me but to be able to go back home to my mother. That's not like me thinking, oh, I'm going to a land of opportunity. So bye, see y'all. And if I see y'all again, y'all broke people, y'all popo, oh well. <laughs> that mentality I can't even imagine. I've seen it, but I can't imagine it for myself because I'm the one that was taken away. And so my whole concept is reuniting with my mother, motherland, Mama Africa. When I'm there, I'm happy. It's like my soul is at peace. My spirit is at peace. My ancestors are saying, we're home again. You know, we're home. Yes, I know lots of my ancestors have died here and built up this place. But it was under duress, y'all strictly under duress. And then after the duress, they didn't know where to go. They had no idea where to go. It had been so many hundreds of years. There was no such thing as DNA. So where would they be even fantasizing going? So of course they brought into the myth that we were indigenous. Like I said, one person in our family four or five generations ago does not make us indigenous to this country. It just means we had a, a relative that was. And so a little part of us was. I'm like 1.5%, but the majority of me is African, because that's my very roots. The roots of my 
tree is Africa. But anyway, I hope that y'all think about what I asked y'all. Are y'all planning on rebuilding Babylon when you get back to the motherland? Just imagine if we exploit her resources, over-exploit her resources, it too will fall in just a little while. Are you thinking about building the nation, rebuilding the nation? Well, that only happens with sustainable living. Green energy, y'all. We have to be thinking green energy. We have to be thinking organic uh, food growing methods, like food gardens. You know, we have to be thinking about sharing food with other people in our community that they share with us and we share with them. And we have biodiversity. So lots of things we can be doing in a cooperative way. So are you gonna be so individualistic that all you can think of is high towers, like they say, the, the man in the high tower? Are you gonna be the man or the woman in the high tower with your electric fence and barbed wire fence? And then thinking, just walking outside that fence, doing some special occasion and bringing some candy or, or something else for a gift to somebody, your, your, your whatever. It's doing somebody a favor. Think again. Like they say, think again. It's all about relationship building. It's all about sustainability. I hope that you will not be thinking to bring that Babylon system to the motherland, but be researching sustainable living as part of your business plan and part of your life plan. I know it's part of mine. I saw my journal from 2004 and in it I was talking about my nonprofit organization. I was talking about what I would want to do with our people over there. And it was always about empowering people to self-sufficiency through education. Because education is the key to change everybody's life. It helped me go from poll to registered nurse and doing fine by my husband at the time being an orderly while he was going to college to becoming a pharmacist. Education is the great equalizer. But it's something more than that, y'all. We have to build processes that live past us, structures that live past us, infrastructure that grows and lives and sustainable past us, something that we can pass down to our children, our children's children and their children, and so on and so forth. I remember watching that movie, Brutes, and they put that babe in the air and they said, are you the one or is there another? So I'm just asking y'all, are you the one or is there another? Are you the one that's gonna go back to the motherland and make a difference? Are you gonna be the one that cares about his brothers and his sisters having an opportunity to get to another level. Now I'm not talking about your elites over there. They have, they have elites now. I'm not talking about them. 
I'm talking about the majority of the people, not the elites. Just like in this country, you know, they got the 99% and the rest of us. But when we go to the motherland, the rest of us seem to be elites over there compared to the average uh, person over there. So that's all I'm saying. Think about it. See if you can hear the call of your ancestors. Do you have a purpose for your life in the motherland? Past getting over on somebody or getting the same deal as the guy that makes one or two dollars a day. <laughs> that you got the exact same price and that's supposed to make you happy. <laughs> I don't get it, y'all. I don't get it. We're not the same on that level, so why would you want to even be on that same level? That you can ignore somebody else's suffering and think by just giving uh, a gift here and there is supposed to make up for all the inequality. I would like everybody that's watching, if you don't know, research colonization in the motherland. I don't care if you was born in the motherland. Research colonization because your fathers and your mothers did not talk about it enough. All the suffering they went through. Yes, there's lots of discrimination over there. There's a lots of discrimination over there. There's apartheid over there. Over almost the whole continent. And for a long time, guys. So, whereas people think just because they was in the majority that they didn't suffer like we suffered in this country and in the other countries where we were considered the minority or less than or whatever else, well, it happened in the motherland too. So many atrocities happened during colonization. Makes you shudder. I have statues at home that's made out of brass. People have chains around their neck, chain to one another. But the only difference is they have guns pointed at them because they had become uh, soldiers and some queen's army, you know, and having guns against their own people because they didn't see them as their people, you know? It's like, oh, I joined the army. They giving me room and board. I got uniform. I mean, the soldiers be barefooted, but have a gun on their own brothers and sisters, not seeing each other that way. So I would hope we are on another level by now and that we can actually see each other as true brothers and sisters and stop thinking that we're different just because of one or two opportunities that the next person doesn't have. Try to think how I can work with my brothers and sisters. Don't have to save everybody, guys. Don't have to help everybody. If you could just make the difference in the life of one family, that would be enough. If each one helped just one, that would be sustainable. We don't have to be gentrified, y'all. I don't want any high fence that I can't see my neighbors and say, hey, how y'all doing today? Yeah, I don't want to just see my neighbors when I walk outside my fence and take a walk and, and video and, and record myself just saying greetings. No, relationships are not televised. True relationships are personal. They're private and should not be used to show off. Your friends are not your pets. I know I'm not nobody's pet to show off. And it used to get on my last good nerve when people would take me around to meet their chiefs and, and other friends that had money to say, oh, look at my in-law from America. I mean, I couldn't even do stuff I wanted to do 
because my time would run out for them trying to show me off. Now, I didn't like it, so I know other folks don't like it either. Anybody that want to say they don't see a lot of people faces in my videos is true because I don't aim to make people uh, be like they in a zoo anywhere. If I'm ever caught doing that, y'all are free to tell me to stop. The only close-ups you'll see is if I can get a close-up of the real pets over there. And I'm not going to do it that much if I don't know the pet, because that pet might decide they don't want to be bothered with me and bite me or something, you know? So, yeah, you got to even be cautious with pets. Better use a zoom lens or something. But anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to say. Are you going to bring Babylon with you? Or are you going to leave it behind? If you say you hate it so much, leave it behind. If you say this system is so bad, please don't recreate it in the motherland. But me, myself, I'm trying my best to get my finances together so when I'm there, I can do what I need to do to stay as long as I can before I come back and tell my family hi again and see if I need to do something different. You know, it's always need to reassess things. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to check in with y'all just to say that and also to ask, are you the one or is there another? Only you can decide if you want to be a part of the solution or if you're going to be part of the problem. I choose to be a part of the solution. When I'm in the motherland, I'm home, y'all. When I'm here, I'm missing the motherland. I know people are always thinking that I'm over there. It's only I just wish I was there all the time. <laughs> I wish I was. But I didn't win the lotto, so no, I'm not. But I'll be there soon, enough. Most high say the same. But anyway, until next time, y'all, peace, peace, power to the people. I'm out, y'all. Bye. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Like a bonus, y'all. I almost didn't record this to share, but couldn't resist. I'm on the pier. how the pier looks on a cloudy day. I'm not going to get where you see it's wet up there because it'll actually splash on me and the camera and that's not the object of the game for me. But hopefully the zoom helps you to see 